So welcome everyone to our last online pitch event in our Asia Pacific road tour. So our last pitch event is on next gen surgical ophthalmology and critical care. For the first time attendees, I'm Sakina, the program director of MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific, and I'm based here in Singapore. And we have with us today our team, and I'll briefly introduce them. So Jerry, our flight attendant, Jerry can say hi. Everyone. Um, <clears throat> My name is Jerry. I'm coming from LA here. I work in um, events and marketing with MedTech Innovator, and I will be there today. So I will be putting everyone into their different breakout rooms. If for whatever reason you have any issues, you can come back to the main room from your breakout room, and I can help you get settled. Thanks, Jerry. So um, if you're not sure of what room you should be in, always go to Jerry. Um, we also have briefly with us um, Clarissa and Eugene. So Clarissa, you can say hi. Hi, hi there. I'm Clarissa. I'm a program assistant here uh, in MedTech Innovator APEC. I'm based in Singapore. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Clarissa. Eugene? Hi, everyone. I'm Eugene, a fellow at MedTech Innovator. So I help out with the due diligence. I'm also based in Los Angeles. I'm very excited to meet you all. And we also have Celine with us today, and she will be in the networking room. Celine, you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Celine. I'm also based in Singapore, and I'll be in the networking room later, so you can find me there. So last uh, for the rounds, uh, we have Paul, who will then pass it over to Frederick, who will host today's event. Paul, please. Thank you, Sakina. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Grand. I'm uh, CEO here at MedTech Innovator. Welcome to our last of our online pitch events. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, we've been doing this now um, since February uh, with a series of pitch events designed to highlight the most exciting companies that have applied to us in our 2021 program. Um, as you see here on the screen again with this slide, we wanna make sure if you're coming in now, you rename yourself to be your first name, and your last name dash your company name. So you just do that by clicking the participants icon at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Rename yourself by hovering over your name, change it to your full name. So I'd be Paul Grand dash MedTech Interview. That way we can make sure you are in the right place during today's event. Uh, you'll see today's event is not like your typical pitch event. So if you're joining us for the first time as one of our pitch companies, uh, you're gonna see that tonight is a little bit different what we're looking to do here tonight is to feature companies, but also to have a chance for our strategic partners who are our partners in this program to have a chance to get to know you. That's what this is about. We can all read your presentations um, on our own, but we wanna have a chance to get to know you. So while you are gonna be pitching tonight and you're gonna be presenting to both the, uh, the YouTube audience, and then you're gonna be doing individual breakouts with our group of judges, uh, what you're going to find is this is an opportunity for you to get feedback from them. So they may, they may have suggestions for you. So please be open to listening to those suggestions, answer questions, and use the time wisely. We want to learn about you. We want to ask you a lot of questions. So don't take too long in your presentations. Uh, more to come on that. Uh, but again, I'm Paul Grand here in Los Angeles. Uh, I am uh, the CEO and you'll have a chance to get to know me better during the program. If you're advanced in the program, uh, you might have a chance to spend some time even in our breakouts tonight. So I'm looking forward to learning about your technologies. Our whole mission is to make you successful. To tell you a little more about that, let me introduce Frederick Nyberg. Uh, Frederick, our managing director, will tell you about MedTech Innovator as well as tonight's event and our overall program. Frederick, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Paul, and a very warm welcome. Good morning to everyone here in Asia Pacific. Good evening to those of you joining us from the US. Uh, my name is Frederick Navik. I'm the Managing Director for Metric Innovator Asia Pacific, based here in Singapore with, with Celine and Clarissa. So I'm going to take a few minutes and give you an overview of um, who we are, what we do, and um, uh, some of the details about today's uh, activities. So um, as Paul mentioned, we are... Um, a, uh, a Los Angeles headquartered accelerator um, and competition. We are in fact the world's largest accelerator um, and our mission really is to uh, improve lives of patients uh, and bring uh, innovations um, that transform uh, healthcare. Um, and um, for all of our participating companies today, 
think uh, you you play a very active part, of course, towards that that mission. What you see on this slide are the um, cohort finalists in the year 2019. These were, of course, in the pre-pandemic days when we all could meet face-to-face. -face. Um, we hope at some point, probably next year, that we'll be able to resume our face-to-face -face activities um, again. Um, we'll talk more about the, um, the grand finals in a moment, um, but this is what it typically looks like when there um, is no pandemic going on. In terms of numbers, um, we had, this is a, a program that's been running now for nine years. Uh, we're in the third year in Asia Pacific. Uh, we have 340 alumni companies that have gone through this globally. Uh, those alumni raised 600 million just last year, um, and they've gone on to raise 2.7 billion in follow-on equity um, from, from the start. We've had 14 outright acquisitions, uh, and every year we have well over 200 reviewers, judges, mentors participating in this program. And you'll meet uh, several of those uh, later this morning. Uh, just a snapshot of what 2020 looked like. Uh, we had uh, last year, we had uh, across the US, Europe, and Asia Pacific close to 1,300 applications. Um, 82 of those were first time. You can see how that splits across digital health, uh, in vitro diagnostics, and traditional medical devices. Um, you can see the development stages here. Uh, many of them are preclinical and clinical but almost one quarter have paying customers uh, and generate revenue, which is interesting. Now, this is a part of an evaluation process. And um, when we look at each of the applications that come in from, from the various startups across the region, um, we um, look at this and our corporate partners look at this from the point of view of three different dimensions. So we, we um, assess each company um, uh, in the areas of value, execution, and momentum. Um, value um, is, of course, about the benefit that the innovation brings to patients, the value proposition, IP, competitive advantage, um, and, and so on. Execution is really about the team strength, um, ability to hit milestones, um, where you are on the regulatory pathways, and momentum is about um, uh, customer validation, where you are with partnerships, commercial traction, and, and general runway. Um, so this is something that our judges will be keeping at the back of their minds as they uh, look at the presentations. And for the startups, uh, make sure that you uh, cover the majority of these points. Certainly, you want to make sure that you, you're clear or at least be prepared to talk about your business model um, and your, uh, your commercial plans. In terms of um, the, um, the overall Asia-Pacific program, so this year we've had a record well over 500 applications um, with our corporate partners as reviewers and uh, independent reviewers from institutional investors and others. We uh, looked at each of those and identified, uh, in fact, the number is now 62 um, after today, 62 companies that will have pitched. Um, and as Paul mentioned earlier, of course, this is our last, our final round of um, online pitches. Uh, what will happen then is that in the next two weeks, we will meet with our corporate partners um, and select out of the 62 companies that have pitched the 20 companies that we believe should be selected for the 2021 Accelerator. Accelerator will take place from, the, uh, from June through to September. Um, and out of those, there will be five finalists that will compete for a grand prize and one winner. Uh, and the winner will walk away with 150,000 US dollars in cash um, and an equal amount of in-kind awards, uh, including a 12-month residency at Johnson & Johnson's J Labs and, and many other awards that you will hear more about. These are the timelines. Um, the um, uh, applications application deadline was uh, February this year. We've now been running the pitch events one through to six from February through to May. Uh, end of this month, as I mentioned, we'll have the selection for the accelerator and then the accelerator mentorship program begins. So um, the accelerator will have two key components. One is 
the um, uh, the mentorship that's um, led by our industry uh, corporate partners. Uh, we will also have a series of educational webinars uh, that will take place every two weeks. Middle of October is when um, the MedTech Innovator Asia Pacific Showcase and Grand Finals will take place at the MedTech Forum. You may recall that we've previously spoken about that uh, taking place at the end of September. Um, our understanding now is that the APAC Med MedTech Forum will actually happen around the 18th, 19th, 20th of October um, to avoid clashing with the AdvaMed event. So um, that is, is likely to be the date for the finals, and you'll hear more about that uh, as well. This is what typically this event looks like. And so the grand finals take place on a main stage in front of an audience of, of well over a thousand people. This was again back in 2019 before we um, before the pandemic hit. Um, I think it's fair to say that it's going to be um, still be a hybrid and probably mostly a virtual event this year. So for our um, finalists, uh, I don't think you need to plan on traveling to Singapore necessarily. Uh, but certainly 2020, we hope to be back and, and run this as a, um, an in-person event. So these are the, um, have been the dates um, and the, uh, the pitch events along our 2021 roadmap. And of course, as you can see, we're now on the very final stay, step here, uh, 11th of May. And the focus today is going to be next generation surgical ophthalmology and critical care. Um, and um, many of you have followed us along this, this journey. Some have been, been in and out, but you can see that we've covered a, uh, a number of, of interesting uh, topics. And uh, the, um, uh, our YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, you can go back and revisit these if you do want to go back and look at the um, one minute lightning round presentations. We couldn't have done any of this really without the backing uh, and the sponsorship uh, from our corporate uh, and service provider partners. So we are an industry-led accelerator, um, and um, we are extremely grateful for the support that we're getting from uh, this group of organizations, Johnson & Johnson, Nipro, Olympus, Align Technology, Oliver Healthcare Packaging, Siemens Health & Ears, Enterprise Singapore, and Cambridge Consultants. And for our startups uh, presenting today, you will get to meet all of these organizations and senior executives from all of these organizations today during the breakout presentations. And as Paul mentioned earlier, they have been um, sent your information ahead of time. They have looked through your presentation material uh, and they have questions. So make sure they have the opportunity to ask those questions. Um, target a presentation of uh, no more than five to seven minutes and then leave the balance of time. Uh, each breakout uh, will be, we have to allocate 20 minutes to so leave the balance of time for Q&A with, um, with the judges. Now, uh, we have a, um, an extraordinary panel of judges today. I think this is probably the record number of uh, 37 or 38 judges. So a very warm welcome to, uh, to all of you. Uh, we're delighted to have you here. As you can uh, see, we have all of our corporate partners very well represented here. Uh, but in addition, we have a number of senior executives uh, from uh, leading service providers, from institutional investors, not only from Asia Pacific, but we're, um, we're very pleased to um, see once again uh, several of our US-based um, institutional investors dialing in. And I know it's late for you in the US, so, so thank you for taking the time. Um, so we have uh, an interesting mixture of, of VCs and, and um, venture capital firms, both from Asia PAC as well as from the US. And again, for our startups, you'll have the opportunity to meet and interact with, with all of these judges uh, during the, uh, the breakouts. Now, what we're going to do next is um, a lightning round of presentations from each of our 11 startups. Um, we, uh, the way the, the 
the uh, and this is something that we will will make um, of course um, available on on YouTube. So those of those of you watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see all of the eleven companies present. Uh, each will be given one minute. Now the uh, we will then have a closed session for the full presentations, and the full presentations will be twenty minute sessions, where typically the startup will present for five to seven minutes, followed by Q and A. Um, but uh, not every judge will have the opportunity to see every startup. So this is, a, this is an opportunity for all judges to view all the startups. Um, and it's an opportunity for everyone on YouTube to um, get an introduction to each of these companies as well. So um, I will call on um, each of you. It's, this will be presented in alphabetical order. Um, I'll call on the presenter. And um, when I call on you, just unmute yourself, begin the presentation. Um, you will have 60 seconds and there'll be a small timer either in the upper right hand or, or, or lower, sorry, the upper left hand or lower left hand corner of your screen. Um, and um, it will be green, it will turn yellow. And as it turns red, you really need to wrap up. Um, so 60 seconds is what we have for each of these. So if our startups are ready, we will begin. And um, just as a general overview, um, these are the 11 companies that you will have the opportunity to meet today. We have uh, companies presenting from India, from Singapore, from Hong Kong, from China, from the US, and from Australia and South Korea. So we're really covering uh, the region as a whole um, and, and mainland China, of course, um, as well as the US. So uh, very, very interesting mix of companies with some very exciting innovations. We will begin with um, Alpha Leos Technology from Velour, India. Uh, and here to present is uh, CEO Sandal. So Sandal, if you're available, unmute yes. yourself and um, we'll get started. Hello everyone, very good morning. This is Sandal from Alpha Leos. And um, the world is beautiful, isn't it? but not if you cannot see it. And unfortunately, glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible blindness. At Alphalius, what we have developed is a portable and uh, cost-effective device to screen for glaucoma via visual field test. This is called Intelligent Vision Analyzer. It's a VR-based uh, visual field analyzer and a vision analyzer. It can perform five different tests that are typically done in an ophthalm oph ophthalmic clinic, but it can be done within a VR headset. There's an advanced device with eye tracking. So a person can simply wear this device and through a mobile tablet, a, a operator can uh, uh, choose the number of tests. And this is telemedicine enabled. Uh, it's very accessible, simple to use, cost effective and telemedicine enabled device. Yep. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Looking forward to hear more about that. We will um, now move on to uh, Inex Innovate um, out of Singapore and here to present. Let me just move the slide forward here. Here to present for INEX is uh, CEO Kane Black. So um, Kane, the floor is yours. Oh, okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, I'm, my name is Chaoping Chen. Um, uh, Kane is actually the, the, not available today. So okay. I'm the head no of R&D of the company. Um, today, I'm glad um, to share with you the, the innovations INEX Innovest has been working on. Um, ovarian cancer is the most deadly gynecological cancer. One in 78 women might develop ovarian cancer in their lifetime. Currently, the surgeon is relying on the tissue histopathology-based frozen section technique to determine if the ovarian cyst is benign or malignant during the surgery to remove the cyst. However, the frozen section is um, time-consuming um, and might miss the cancer due to the sectioning error. INEX has developed OVASIS, which is a rapid test to detect a protein evenly distributed in the ovarian cyst fluid. Ovarian cyst, uh, OVASIS can help the surgeon during the surgery to discriminate, to discriminate between benign and malignant ovarian cyst in 15 minutes, which brings the higher accuracy and low cost to both the surgeon and the patient. Thank you. Thank you very much for that, uh, Japan. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Looking forward to hearing more about that. Very good. We will now move on to um, Mimic from Bangalore, India. Um, we have co-founder 
uh, and uh, co-founder Shantu Chakrabarti here. So um, Shantanu, are you able to um, unmute yourself? Yes. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Hello everyone. So gastrointestinal uh, cancers are the leading cause of death due to cancer. It kills more than 2 million people annually. Endoscopy is the sort of gold standard for early detection and treatment of GI cancers. At more than 100 million procedures, it's one of the largest minimally invasive procedure carried out in the world. My name is Shantanu. I am from Mimic. We are a team building single-use platform for uh, GI endoscopy. The single-use platform reduces infection risk. It removes um, uh, barrier for entry. It reduces costs. Uh, it improves efficiency. The system also comes with connected technology. We are building AI systems for empower, empowering clinicians for better patient safety and outcome. And this, we are looking at huge opportunity, not only in terms of market, but also in terms of um, uh, in terms of impact. Finally, we look forward to the support from the community here as we make endoscopy more accessible, safe, and smart. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shantano. Exciting stuff. Single-use endoscopy. This is very interesting. Looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, next, we have Miracles. Um, and from Miracles, we have co-founder and uh, chief executive, Sabir Hossein. Sabir, are you there? Yep. Thank very you. good. Over to you. Hello, everyone. We have developed a compound that can stop bleeding in just 40 seconds, five times faster than any gold standard solution out there. This is in a powder form, which makes it flexible to use in any shape, size, severity of the wound. So basically, when there is any kind of minor injury, you just need to pour it on the wound and it will stop bleeding, prevent from infections, and it will heal the wounds as well. And for major injuries, it will act as a pre-hospital treatment, allowing the injured patients to reach the nearest point of care without losing a fatal amount of blood, thus increases the survive chances of survival. This powder also works with people having blood clotting disorders, and it doesn't require any kind of expertise to apply. Put simply, stop bleed will save lives. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Sabir. Appropriate name, Miracles. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about that. Um, so next up, we have uh, Nayam Innovations. Uh, and um, here to give us a quick overview is uh, CEO Tanuj Gigras. Tanuj, are you um, unmuted? Uh, Over to good you. Morning, good morning, everyone. My name is Tanuj. I'm the co-founder of Nayam Innovations. Cataract is one of the most prevalent age-related disorders of the eye. The only treatment for cataract is replacement of our natural lens with an artificial intraocular lens. But these lenses are not customized to individual patients' eyes and small mismatches lead to either suboptimal vision or spectacle dependence after cataract surgery. So Nayam is developing the world's first fully personalized and customized intraocular lens to give spectacle-free vision to these patients. This is enabled by our intellectual property, which is filed in multiple countries. We have raised or have committed more than $2.5 million in equity. And in the next two years, we'll be completing our pilot clinical study and set up 100,000 lens per year manufacturing unit. The total market size is about $4.5 million annually with 32 million cataract surgeries. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you, Tanoj. Looking forward to, uh, to hearing more about that. Very exciting. Um, technology. Uh, next up, we have uh, from Hong Kong, Ophormic Technology. Uh, I'd like to invite Dr. Langston Swen. Um, if, um, if you are here, please unmute yourself. Uh, unmute yourself and um, go yeah. ahead with the Thank presentation. You. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So imagine plunging a needle into an eyeball. It sounds horrific, but actually that's one of the most common way to deliver drugs in the eye. And currently, there are 6 million eye injections that are performed annually in the U.S., which is equivalent to a $6 billion market. Based on a decade of research, Ophamic has developed a unique, non-invasive ultrasound drug delivery technology that has the true potential to replace invasive eye injections. Ophamic is now in partnership with pharmaceutical companies in Asia, Europe, and U.S. to co-develop new eye drugs and new treatment paradigm, which could potentially cover 70% of the global IDC's market. 
Moreover, we have extended our applications to cover other eye applications, for example, glaucoma and dry eyes, which affects more than 450 million patients globally. I'm Langston Soon, co-founder of Ophamic, and we are dedicated to provide non-invasive and innovative treatment solutions for patients suffering from different eye disease globally. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for that very interesting new uh, drug delivery technology there that we'll hear more about uh, later. Um, next up, we have Pacify Medical um, and CEO Sai Prasad. If you are there, please unmute yourself um, and um, give us a brief overview. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sai Prasad. Globally, more than 70% of patients get affected by infection due to an open wound after a major burn accident. We are here to minimize the ratio for them with a surgical device which sprays patients' own skin on the large wound with no pain of the stitches, helping them to protect from the infection and resulting in faster healing than the nearest competitor. I am Sai Prasad Poirekar from Pacify Medical Technologies. We are an interdisciplinary team of stellar scientists, engineers, and clinicians, and regulatory experts who make this happen. We are also recipients of prestigious government grants and awards. Right now, we will be conducting clinical validations in hospitals and completing the certifications. We plan to pilot launch by early next year. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. We um, next up we have Spine Guide uh, dialing in from the US and presenting on behalf of Spine Guide. I believe we have uh, Herbe Sue. So Herbe, if you're there, yeah, this this is a Hebe. I'm the CFO Hebe. of I'm Spine so, Guide. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No I should have asked you ahead of time. Yeah. Go ahead. Floor is yours. Yes. Did you know that there were more than 30,000 patients accept scoliosis correction surgeries each year in the U.S. alone? Such surgeries are highly invasive and it requires multiple efforts to keep the spinal growth. There was a high unmet clinical need for treatment that provides both good correction and spine growth with fewer surgeries and less trauma. Our device, CurveRight, is a game-changing implant system that correct, corrects the curved spine in just one single surgery and allows the spine to grow non-invasively under the guidance of our device. Our inventor, Dr. Lee, is an orthopedic surgeon of 15 years who has already spent a, a, almost a decade researching this device. Today, he has successfully run 33 surgeries with our device on sheep. Our self-funded first in human trial is expected next month. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. He will be looking forward to hearing more about that later on. Um, next up, we have from uh, Australia, Surgery Tools. And presenting on behalf of Surgery Tools, uh, we have CEO, Dr. Wang, Wang Cheng. So, um, Dr. Wang, we, um, if you're able to unmute yourself. Do we have um, Dr. Wang from Surgery Tools here? Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Cheng Wang from uh, Surgery Tools. 20 to 40% of all women will require hysterectomy at some point in their life. Lopro is which has a, a shorter recovering time and less external scarring, is the preferred option for most women. However, it requires a higher surgical skill to perform because it has high risk of complications. Surgery Tools is a clinician funded medical innovation company. We have developed a couple wave capotomizer and a survey grip neutron manipulator to reduce difficulty and increase safety when performing laparoscopic hysterectomy. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Looking forward to hearing more about that during, during the breakout. Um, so next up, our company number 10 will be VPix Medical. And here to present from VPix, I believe we have um, Kunhe, Kunhi Lee. Kunhi, are you able to? Yes, I'm here. 
pre- yeah, present. Very good. Very good. For the intro. All right, over to you. Have you ever lost your loved ones to cancer? My name is Chris, and I've lost a family member because of it. One of the most effective ways to overcome cancer is surgery, but unfortunately, it is challenging to fully eliminate cancer cells around the mountains. This is the reason why surgeons do biopsy around the lesion and send it to pathologists to make sure none are left. Even though this labor-intensive method has severe limitations, including biopsy sampling errors, it did not change for over 100 years. Vipix Medical, a Korean startup team of 18 people, overcome the traditional intraoperative diagnosis using a breakthrough handheld surgical microscope called C-cell. This allows surgeons to work with pathologists in real time with unlimited images obtained in vivo. CISA will make a difference in the lives of millions of people, including our loved ones. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Looking forward to um, to hearing more about that during the breakout. Uh, so our final company today is uh, Joyan Medical Technology, and here to present um, or give the one minute um, pitch is uh, Ro One. Hi, hi everyone. Good morning. I'm Ro. I'm a board certified surgeon in China and also co-founder of Joyan Medical. So our project is focusing on a novel suturing device used in endoscopic surgery. With natural orifice transluminal endoscopic surgery, any incision of the abdominal wall can be avoided. However, suturing using an endoscope is very, very challenging for surgeons because endoscopes are very flexible. This flexibility is useful for navigating the body, human body, but it can be an impediment for su- ensuring the rigidity needed for suturing. Additionally, metal clips are mostly commonly used to close wounds in endoscopic surgery, but these clips are not only expensive, but also remain in the body permanently and cause complications. So we have developed this new suturing system and achieved successful endoscopic suturing on animal models. So now we are seeking clinical approval as our next step. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. And I believe that uh, concludes our lightning round. So thank you. Thank you all, all of our startups uh, for those, those presentations. And of course, for our judges, you'll be able to hear much more um, during the breakout sessions. <coughs> Excuse me. What we're going to do now is, is just quickly orient our judges. Um, many of our judges have been judging for, for multiple sessions, and you are very familiar with this, uh, but we do have 37, 38 judges today, and we have several judges that are uh, new and are judging for the very first time. So uh, bear with me while I just orient our judges. Now, you should have um, the, the link to the form. Uh, if you do not, please reach out in private uh, message to Sakina or to Clarissa if you need any help with any of that. Uh, but essentially, this is what that form would look like. So what we'd ask you to do is after the, each company that you will hear present, um, and our judges will um, see no more than four companies each, uh, you will not see all 11. Uh, so after, you, after each of the companies, um, each company has pitched, kindly complete uh, this online form. So you indicate, you just simply select the company that you are given the uh, evaluation for. You tell us whether or not you were previously aware of this particular company, of course, before Medtech Innovator. Uh, You can then capture your pitch notes here. These notes are for you as a judge, um, and we will email them back to you so you have them in one place. Um, only you will, will see those notes. Um, the next section um, is, is very important. This is where our judges are able to provide anonymized feedback directly to the startup. Um, and uh, not every startup, of course, is going to go on to our accelerator, but the, whatever feedback is provided to our startups is usually immensely valuable. So we encourage our judges to um, provide, maybe in bullet form, um, direct feedback on what you liked, what you didn't like, areas of improvement uh, directly to the startup. Um, it can be that you felt that they had a very strong management team um, or they were a bit weak on their 
competitor analysis, uh, whatever it may be, provide that feedback here and it will go anonymized directly back to the startup. Then we ask you to rate the company uh, on whether you feel that it is uh, a me too technology, whether it's incremental or potentially transformative. Um, and then on a scale from one to 10, 10 being the strongest, we'd like you to rate uh, the overall um, opportunity in terms of whether you think it's uh, likely to succeed. Uh, if you think it's highly likely to succeed, rate it an eight, nine, or 10. If you think it's less likely, of course, rate it lower. And then we'd like you to just look at these uh, five factors in the likelihood of success. And this is a scale from one to five. One is weak, five is strong. Um, indicate uh, your view on uh, how you see the value um, to the patient, technical feasibility, strength of the team. Um, give us a, your view on the health economics aspects, the value proposition and the business model, and ultimately likelihood of funding. Uh, and just ask yourself the question, would you write a check to this company? Uh, whether you think that's highly likely or, or less likely, please give us your view on that. And uh, during our judges' deliberations, we will, we will look at the results, consolidate the results from all our judges, uh, and go through each of the startups in some detail. We will also ask you to um, highlight, again, you can do this in bullet form, um, what you determine are some of the key risks facing these startups. Um, it can be about their market strategy. It can be about the um, weaknesses in their team and leadership. It can be about uh, um, uh, poorly articulated um, reimbursement strategy. Um, whatever you, you, you think is something they will um, have challenges with, uh, please uh, list that under risk. And then look at execution in terms of what you find particularly attractive. Um, whether it's uh, good differentiation over competition, um, great health economics, terrific value proposition, whatever that may be, again, give us, uh, please give us your feedback there. And then in terms of validation, ultimately, how well does the startup understand the stakeholders uh, and how well have they articulated the value proposition? Um, so please give us your view on, on that as well. Finally, and this is very important, uh, if there are any suggested resources that you as a judge would suggest uh, to this particular startup, here is a, uh, the field for you to complete that. Uh, this could be, for example, if um, there are um, resources that they can tap into either through Metech Innovator, through your organization, or that may be um, reports available for free on the, on the internet. Anything that could be uh, of help to this particular startup, uh, feel free to list that under suggested resources. And then finally, we ask if um, the company gets advanced in our due diligence process, would you be interested to have a follow-up call with this company? So simply indicate yes or no. And then finally, if you got any additional comments. So if you could complete that, please, uh, for each of our judges, for uh, all of the, uh, the, the four companies you will uh, meet today, uh, you can either click submit and that will get immediately submitted uh, and Paul will consolidate all that for us for the judge deliberation, or you can save the draft, um, in which case we just ask you not to close your browser because that will get saved in your cache on your, on your browser. So uh, go back to that later and complete it and submit it um, before we get to the uh, deliberations. So um, that essentially is the um, quick overview for our judges. Um, I will, if you have any specific questions on that, feel free to reach out to uh, Sakina or Clarissa, um, and you can, you can uh, contact them directly on chat. Um, just a quick recap on how the pitch sessions now will work. Uh, we will close this momentarily to our YouTube uh, live audience, and the rest of the sessions will be closed door for our judges only. There will be four rounds, and we will have six breakout rooms. Um, each session is 20 minutes. The, the startups will, uh, you should target five minutes, ideally take no more than seven. Certainly do not take more than 10 minutes for your, your presentation because the, uh, the judges have specifically asked 
to meet with you and to see your presentation. And therefore they have already done some reading up on what it is that you do. So they want to ask questions, please ensure that they have the time to do so. So um, you will see at the top of your screen in the breakout rooms when you have 10 minutes left, when you have five minutes left and when you have one minute left, uh, the 20 minutes is a hard stop. So you will get automatically pulled back into the main room at the end of 20 minutes. So make sure that you cover anything you want to cover before then. Um, and um, for the startups, there will be uh, times when you do not need to present. And uh, in between sessions, if you have a break, you will be um, put into our break room. Now, the break room is where you will find other startups uh, that are on break as well. And this is an opportunity to network. Of course, you can go off and do something else and have a get a cup of coffee. You're welcome to do that. But we would encourage you to network with the other startups that are in the room. Uh, introduce yourself. Um, you can find the contact details to everyone that you will meet today, whether the startup uh, presenters, representatives, or our judges in our bio book. And I might ask uh, Sakina or Clarissa just to put a link to the bio book in the chat. So all of you can go to that bio book and see who else will be here and you will have the contact information there. Um, so, so do take the opportunity to introduce yourself, speak to your fellow presenters, uh, ask them what they're doing, ask them about what, uh, whether they've done any recent rounds of financing, they might be able to introduce you to investors, who knows? So uh, take that opportunity to speak to the other startups in the break sessions. For our judges, sorry, there is no break for you. The judges will be participating in each of the four um, sessions. Um, and uh, just once again, for the startups, the judges have previously given us um, their indication on which startups are their top tier and second tier. So we have allocated them so that the judges will meet the startups they would like to meet out of the 11. So that's how it's going to work. Um, and we will get Jerry here momentarily to... Uh, um, bring us into our first breakout session. Uh, before we do so, I just wanted to say thank you to our YouTube audience for joining us. Uh, this is our final um, uh, online pitch event for this season. Um, do join us uh, when we start uh, posting some of our webinars, accelerator webinars online. You will be able to catch those uh, after the event. There will be more, there'll be more information coming out on that. So follow us on, on social media and uh, you'll be able to um, track what is happening to and who the companies are that will get selected for the accelerator and and how the accelerator program evolves so thanks everyone on youtube we'll uh pause here for sakina